No one can tell the story of the National Alliance for Insurance Education and Research like its co-founder, Dr. William T. Hold. Let's look back on the last 50 years and see how they have shaped our co-founder and executive chairman and what he's learned. Well, you have to just uh, basically tough it out. You have to believe in what you're doing and you can't get rattled by it. Doesn't mean I don't get mad. I don't want to file under false colors. That's it. You just have to believe because no matter what you do, somebody's going to criticize you. So we had this old saying, you know, stand where right is. Well, right shifts a lot. You know, what is what is standing where right is? Do the right thing. At least then you'll you'll say, I did what I thought was right. I didn't listen to Eddie or I didn't listen to Edna. You know, I, I wasn't pushed back and forth. We did what we thought was right for the participants. So that's the beacon, if you will. And Jim Rubel really said that over and over. What is the best thing for the participant? Regardless of it, may not be the best thing for us. You have to recognize what the competition is. And we're not competing with any other education program. We're competing for people's time and money. We have to provide them with a value that exceeds the amount that they've spent and the amount of time they spent. If we can't present them with a value that's greater than the time and the money they spent, we'll fail. We've always kept that in mind. We have to provide that additional value. Not be equal, not be under, but be above. Second, you have to enforce the rules. People will not respect you if you say one thing and never do it. Because the minute you set up a rule, somebody comes up right to the line and says, okay, what are you going to do about this? I say you're going to take away my designation if I didn't send the insurance company's money. Are you really going to do that? We said, yeah, you bet we are. Well, I didn't do my annual update. Are you going to take away my designation? Yes, we are. Here's a registered letter. You're not, a, you're not a CIC any longer. So people may not like some of it, but they respected us for doing that. And again, you get back to a valuable product. We had very good lectures. We had good material. And we did everything professionally. We, did, we, had, we treated people right. If you treat people with respect, they will respect you. Now, if you don't treat them with respect, you don't care about them, they're not going to care about you either. Well, there's a couple of proud moments, but events. One is that we've been able to sustain these very long-term relationships with clients and with our coworkers. We have people that work with us now that have been with us for more than 40 years, many 20 years, many 30 years. Uh, so that's been a reward. These We've had associations licensed for 40 years. The proudest moment, I really know, whole 50 years, very sad moment, was a lady in Nebraska that had terminal cancer, and she knew that she was not going to live to be at the confirmant if she passed. Her, her single life goal was to become a CIC before she passed away. She did pass away. So this was in Nebraska, and I went there. That was the first time and only time ever we ever present anybody with a, our diploma posthumously. And I said, if somebody cares that much, what should we do? Or if a blind person or a deaf person or people with came to us and said, we want this designation. They weren't whining and crying and the rest of it. This lady could have given up the ship a long time ago. I said, what, this is not important. I'm going to die, but it wasn't. We owe those people. And if you want to go to the other end of the spectrum, the most embarrassing moment was a convention that was held in Banff, you know, British Columbia. And we had the big, big crowd because it was in Banff and all, you know, Lake Louise and all the people from, all of our critics were there, and it was Montana con confirmed. And they didn't, they've had 300 people. I mean, mostly you had 50 in Montana, you know, not that many people. They were all there. So we, I get there and prepare my speech. People with me, I said, how many conferees do we have? I said, one. I said, one. I said, be sure you call them so that they show up. So I go through my whole speech in front of all these dignitaries that were there because it was a beautiful place. I call a man's name, and he wasn't there. I never was so embarrassed in my life. And, and luckily, when you look at our history of the 50 years, we've never really taken any steps backward. Never really had any big failures, any things where we've you know, had scandals about management and scandals about the exams or exams, nothing like that. Uh, we've had very, very stable leadership you know, throughout, you know, throughout the whole ranks, and I'm very proud of that, that we maintain that stability. Can't afford these days to get on a downward spiral. 
So that's why as we move forward, it's important to have really good people. William, my son, is the president now. I think we all have confidence in him. I don't agree with everything that he does or how he thinks, but he's the president. And that's one of the toughest things. You know, I don't want to be the president anymore because I've done I've done it. It's time for me to, to back off. It's very hard to do. I'm not going to make any bones about that because you want to have an input and you care about it. And it's not always going to be the way you would do it. And maybe that's good in some ways. So I said there, well, you know, in 50 years or something, you know, I'll be this old and, the, you know, what am I going to do then? Well, it actually happened, didn't it? So you're sitting there and all these things you thought about happening are happening. So it's time to leave and, it's, and, and you want to leave a winner. You want to leave a company in shambles, you know, like some professional football teams, you know, the coach gets canned because he's been there too long. And you want to have people have a good image of you. You've done a good job. Then leave them with a pile of baloney to deal with. So we're sort of at that point. And I think we've brought on really good people and trying to improve in every area. Some people just step down and say, I'm done. Some people don't ever step down. They get everybody mad at them. Uh, some people sort of I try to back off in a good way, but uh, there are things that are going to be done differently. There are different talents. Uh, today, if we, we're hiring a president today. That's not, that's not the person like I was. We don't need a person with academic credentials. We don't need a person that had association experience. All the things that we really needed that I happen to have, we don't need today. We need a good manager, somebody that's good at marketing, somebody that is, has bigger in them and, the, and the, the resoluteness to be a tough cookie when they have to be. And we've seen that in our the latest challenges with COVID, with the whole business of will people come back to work? How will they come back to work? Uh, these are big, big issues that are going to determine the future of companies. You have to really think about these things and, again, ask yourself, what is the best thing for this business and our customers, not me? Money will come if you have a good business and you provide a valuable service. And to go out there and, and sort of try to see, you know, you know, you can, you know, success is, you know, you can, you can read what other people have, have written, hear what other people have said. But you know what we need to do is we need to think thoughts that nobody else has thought before us. I mean, you look at the greatest ideas that we've seen. They didn't invent anything, but they just thought about it in a different way. Be it Federal Express, be it Amazon, they didn't invent an airplane. They, they just figured out a different way to deliver a package. They didn't invent the packages, but they started inventing them, didn't they? So if you looked at some of these ideas, they looked they're like really screwball ideas. Why would you send everything to Memphis if it's going to Dallas from Austin? That doesn't make any sense, but they made sense out of it. That's that's what I mean about the idea. The great and pers perseverance. You've got to stick with your idea. You can't be quitting. I think the people that are most successful in their careers are people that really have an interest in the subject. Pick a subject that you like. You know, if you really hate the subject, you're never going to be successful at it. Because many of the most successful people in our current history did things because they liked doing them. You know, they just sort of was an interesting idea. You know, um, the computer people, the people that at Microsoft, all those folks, they were really interested in that. They didn't have a great vision. Nobody really does. You can't think of all these things at once. You need to have an interest in what you're doing, a zest for it, so that when the tough times come that you suck it up and you, you work through it because you believe in it and you like it. If you're in a business, you're going to get your nose blood. But everything is not going to be a success. You're not going to be congratulated for every move you make. But as I've told many, many people, and they're tired of hearing me, I said, you know, life is a series of continuing beginnings and endings, and you do not have to be undefeated to be a champion. I see an increase, obviously, in technology. I think the courses will change. I think we can never get away from having valuable practice-oriented information. I think people are people. They appreciate quality. But we have to keep our head down, focus on respecting every participant. Uh, we're going to teach in different ways, teach in different venues. We're going through that now. 
Uh, but as long as we, as we do what we know to do, and of all the associations that we've been involved in over 50 years, I can say with, with, with all candor and honesty, we're the only one that is stronger today than they were 50 years ago. We have affiliations, you know, for long term with the Latin American agent associations, with the Afro-American agents, people, uh, with almost everybody, because there is no standard of entrance. You, you come into the program, you follow the rules, you do the exams, and everybody is treated the same. So we built those relationships that nobody else has really ever done, and we came up with a program that's really different, and that when you look at people and are the what they say about the program, how we've changed their lives. Why would people write me letters? Uh, they've been in the agency business for 35 years. They've sold their agencies, and they write me a letter thanking us. If it weren't for CIC, I couldn't have done this. You can't ask for more than that. That's the reward, right? Because when it's all over, people are not going to care how many cars you own or how many houses you have or how much money you have in the bank. They care about what you've done. And that's when I go back to what you said earlier. It's the legacy. What did you leave? Well, thank, thank, thank everybody that has let us have a chance. You know, they gave us a chance. They came to the program. And so far, so good. But we have a long way to go, and it's not over yet. <laughs>